Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament broadcast here on Azubu TV. My name is Reed Rapid Melton, and I do want to welcome you back to the show. In case you are just now joining us, well, you missed our first best of uh, three of the day. Someday able to take a narrow 2 1 comeback victory over Marin. But of course, that was then. This is now, and we're into our second best of three of the night as Trace. Janair Greenwings takes on Najin EM Fires Pure. Now we'll get a chance to see exactly how these two players advance to this point in the playoffs here after game number one. But uh, maybe just to jog some of your memories, if you missed these previous games, Pure and Trace got here to the finals. Pure with a victory over uh, Raim, player on I Am Athena, and of course with a 2 1 victory over Pilot. No stranger to taking down Jenner Greenwings players in the uh, the Solo King. Of course, Trace, player on Jenner Greenwings, picked up a 2-0 victory over, once again, another I Am Athena player, Lol Bunny. And of course, with a uh, equally impressive victory, 2-0 over SKT's, or not SKT, but KT Arrow in uh, the finals of his uh, part of Group A. That's how these teams, or these players, got into uh, got into this round of twelve. We'll see how they do in their final best of three. One player advances. Let's find out who it is. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Trace versus Pure in a best of three here, one v one tournament. Broadcast on Azubu TV. It's the Solo King. My name is Rapid, and we're getting into game number one of their best of three. It all comes down to this: Trace with Morgana. I, uh, I'm kind of confused to see this, and then of course you realize the last time these players faced off against each other, Trace actually won. Oh, well, not against each other, but uh, last time these players were in the Solo King, Trace actually won two out of his four zero victory games on uh, on Morgana. Picked up a win on Lulu, two wins on Morgana, and of course a win on Scion, which was actually really impressive to watch. He played a full tank Scion and just got unkillable, farmed up those minion waves and picked up a uh, creep score victory. And as far as victories are concerned, when they win, both of these players prefer first blood, or at least pure prefers first blood, whereas Trace is much more of an objective uh, focused player. Uh, two tower kill victories, one creep score victory, and a first blood victory. Spread it out all across the board. Take a look at the invent vote. You can see their poll there on the screen. 24%. Believe the pure can pick up a win, whereas Trace with 76% of the vote. Not often that you see uh, a player who plays a little bit more of a supportive style of champion be favored in the uh, in the vote, specifically with his earlier performances. And while he did win an undefeated 4-0 trip through his bracket no, earlier... <laughs> okay, Pure just putting out a little shots fired already onto the ground. Nothing too consequential. So here's the way that Trace plays this lane. Okay, he'll start with enough sustain from his, um, from his passive gives him 20% spell vamp or 10% I believe is what it starts out at and he'll just pull the wave over and over again uh, we've seen him start flask before but primarily it's just the Dorian's ring so that he makes sure to have enough ability power spam out on the wave get some mana back and of course get some health back along with his passive as well And put the pool down on the wave, and just watch Trace's health bar specifically. Uh, he'll get a little bit of HP back from levels, but more importantly, just the spell vamp off of this passive is actually pretty darn significant, even though it's cut by a third. Oh, Trace wants to get into Dark Binding range. I believe that is the spell he took second. But look at those piercing lights coming out from Pure. He's actually able to go through the creep wave and land several of them onto Trace to have overall the life total advantage here. But of course, that's probably going to be the case for most of the lane phase, just because he did start with a very, very high sustain item build, uh, crystalline flask, health potions, no Doran's blade. Uh, we did see a Doran's blade pick up on Kaelin. However, that was mostly because Kaelin was focusing on uh, a lot of early harassment, whereas now for Lucian, 
Recognizes may not necessarily be able to pick up a kill in lane, but does need the ability to sustain through a lot of those tormented soils being put down. Now, a problem with tormented soil is that it's not exactly the easiest skill to last hit with. You have to time your ticks down there on the minion. Oh, Dark Biting misses through the minions. Actually hit onto a minion right the second before it died. A little bit heartbreaking there for Tracer, who's actually going to take a uh, trip back to base. Very early on, gets a second Doran's Ring and just heads right back into lane. And uh, usually the player who is forced to base first actually has a little bit more of a disadvantage uh, just because they weren't in lane long enough to pick up enough gold or as much gold as their opponent whoa walking forward no threat of the dark binding pure trading very very aggressively in this 1v1 dark binding cooldown it's coming up here in just a second it's up where is it going to come out to the left to the left everybody dark binding probably to the right though when it comes out we'll see where pure finds himself on what side of the minion wave but just consistently pooling intense micro abilities the the mechanics on those tormented soils, the likes of which the world has never seen. But uh, as for Trace, though, right now, he just has to make sure that he puts himself in a good enough spot as far as wave positioning is concerned so that he can get a, a positioning advantage in the lane that'll punish Pure for going back to base earlier. It's kind of a mouthful to say, but you get the idea. If Pure is, first, is forced to go back to base in a position where the wave's going to hit his turret while he's gone, he's going to lose a couple of minions, and when the minion, or CS count rather, is actually as close as it is, 33 to 34, 36 to 35 now. Thanks for changing up the math on me. Where's that Dark Binding? He's fishing for it. No more Relentless Pursuit. Trace wants to hit it and does big trade advantage, and that's exactly what I was talking about. If he can land that Dark Binding, force Trace, or first Pure back to base, That'll mean that he'll actually be able to shove this entire wave of minions into the turret. Probably deny quite a few of them. The Pure who is going to have to sit on the fountain for a little bit before he goes ahead and heals on up. <gasps> Flashing on it. Whoa, Trace didn't go back to base. He's got the barrier. Will that barrier be enough? It's going to fade away. And speaking of fade away, there's Pure coming back from base. Kind of... Caught Trace looking. He was trying to head back to base himself, but had his recall stopped. And watch this. This is where he flashes the dark binding. That's your hashtag, the solo king big play. If that's actually a hashtag, it's a good time to use it. Flashing that dark binding, getting up close and personal, gives pure a game one victory over Trace. And that's kind of the way that the cookie crumbles, or at least the game, looked in Trace's favor for a while. Uh, got that first base, came back in the lane, looked pretty strong, but kind of got caught looking. There towards the end, uh, had that Dark Binding flashed over, just beautiful, beautiful play. And that's, uh, that's going to do it for game number one. So coming into game number two, there's a couple of things to watch out for. A, do we see a Morgana ban? It's been proven to be one of his strongest champions so far in this tournament. But in that last game just couldn't really stand up to the early game pressure. Pure Lucian. Trace once again, uh, overall... A much better player at the, the long, slow game. If you look at the way that these players got here to the tournament, of course, we'll get a chance to look at that here in just a second. Trace had an average, had a total time played of 41 minutes and 36 seconds, whereas Pure's total time played was almost half that much, with a total of 24 minutes. And, and that means that he's not only bringing Flash Ignite a lot, he's playing very aggressive, all-in based champions, it was awesome to watch this guy play an aggressive style, whereas Trace's style is very slow, passive, farmed out the wins, primarily with champions like Morgana. Let's go ahead and take a look at how these players got here after after they picked their champions. Changing up the format a little bit on me. But with game number one going to pure, he'll swap over to the blue side. We'll look at the opportunity to first pick first band. And speaking of bands, we're going to go ahead and see that Scion band versus Trace. Trace played an almost unstoppable Scion in his uh, group stage match. It was awesome to watch it. So if you missed that game, of course, make sure to go back and check out the VODs. I believe they're up on Azubu's YouTube channel. Azubu Tubu. 
but uh, you can also find them here on here on this channel. What do you know? Um, as far as this matchup is concerned, that Morgana ban is the most important one uh, for for pure, so that not necessarily a champion he had trouble dealing with, but if he hadn't caught that lucky break, I don't want to call it necessarily lucky. If he hadn't caught Trace backing, it might have been a little bit more difficult for him once Pure was able to, or Trace was rather able to kind of hammer home that sustain in lane, the ability to shove the wave very, very safely might have been very difficult to deal with. But now that we're through the bands, 380 carry bands <laughs> versus Pure, no big surprise there. It's like, it's almost like 80 carries are good champions. At least when Pure plays them. I was thinking about the Kalista, a Kalista champion so good. She only needs half the amount of abilities that her opponent needs. Of course, not able to use her Banshee or ultimate. Ability Fate's Call because there is no Fate to Call. We talked about the style. Trace wants to play a passive farm style of game, whereas Pure is looking for all in Flash Ignite plays. Those are the summoner spells that he used over the course, or primarily over the course of his group stage matches. See if he locks this Jarvan in. If it's versus a Renekton, that would really surprise me. Um, we haven't seen too many Renektons. We've actually seen a couple of Renektons get outplayed into the ground. And I don't want to spoil too many results. But specifically for Trace, this represents a very big shift in style for him. Uh, Trace, a much better, like we said, long game player. Uh, he has a longer overall time played. He has way higher creep score. When it comes to CS, Trace has a total of 335 CS in his four games played. Whereas Pure's total CS is 114. And what's even more impressive about that is that Trace has actually played less games uh, than Pure has. Just to give you an idea of exactly how pronounced the difference is between these two players. But a little bit of a different take on the game here for Trace is he locks in Renekton. Kind of the pinnacle of lane bully status or at least most dominant top laner for a very long period of time. Back in season four, it feels so weird to say back in season four. It's been a, it's been a pretty long time since then. But after locking in their champions, it's going to be Renekton versus Jarvan, Trace versus Pure, respectively. And I cannot wait to say wait to see this our uh, second best of three of the night. So do want to thank everyone for coming out here, tuning into the Solo King on Azubu TV. Hit that follow button right down below. Check out the extra life charity support that if you can at all possible and of course stick around because when we come back we'll be into game number two between trace and pure of course we'll also get a chance to see exactly how they got here in this tournament let's go ahead and get into game Oh,你为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什么为什
도마, 자, 도마. 로빈이를 아 여기서. 인간미가 있는 거죠? 그렇죠. 어, 너무 잘한 기가 왔고. 오, 지금 어. 더 부담스러워요. 이거 아, 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 여기서 트레이스. 에로우 선수. 자, 도마. 아 아니, 이거 트레이스 선수 너무 잘 맞추고 심리전에서 일단 앞서고 있어요. 네. 아. 와! 트레이스! 대박! 그래서 아, 터져요. 밀려서 터져요. 승부를, 터져요. 승부를 내는데 성공합니다. 트레이스. 마지막까지 싸우는데 그것마저도 이겨버리네요. 어, 어, 그래요. 대하게. 글쎄요. 어, 이거 자, 어, 글쎄요. 트레이스 어, 글쎄요. 이거 쉴드 있는데 이거. 어. 자, 여기서 한 발, 한 발. 누구냐. 누구냐. 아, 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 먼저 패시브가 빠집니다. 에로 선수. 아, 이거 아. 그냥 포딱 가나요? 자, 가나요? 그냥, 그냥 가나요? 만화가 아, 없어요. 자, 에로 트레이스. 결국에 트레이스 선수가 첫 번째 포탑을 먼저 파괴시킨. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament, of course, broadcast here on Azubu TV. My name is Rapid, and we're getting into game number two between Pure and Trace. Trace going with, instead of his normal sort of farm-based style that he's played almost exclusively here in the Solo King, he's going to pick up a little bit more of a lane bully, play a little bit more aggressively. Grabbing that Renekton versus Pure's Jarvan the Fourth. Now, Pure, of course, the, by far the more aggressive player. Did not mean to use that particular word choice, but uh, to illustrate the difference, that, or at least the difference says that we're seeing, this game, Trace is playing a more aggressive champion, whereas Pure is actually picking up a little bit more of a passive sustain kind of, kind of build. Not going for a Doran's Blade or Longsword 3 health potions. It's just. A crystalline flask start and of course when you start with a crystalline flask you actually want to stay in base for a little bit longer wait until after minions spawn and get that last 10 gold to pick up a uh, an extra potion before you make your way into lane It's a friendly banter between the uh, the players before we start things off. And of course, both players friends, but also maybe enemies. Of course, we'll see if uh, see if Trace is sad plane or glad plane after Pure is done with him. He's already maybe a little bit sad after losing game number one. Uh, oh, a little bit of trade back and forth. Even though Pure may have done a little bit more damage, Trace has got that health coming right back his way. Trey's going to move maybe a little bit more forward in the lane just because he has the ability to not only get health back but also CS the minion wave. Getting a little bit unlucky with one of those minions walking into the enemy minion wave. So, got to keep an eye on that. As far as CS goes, he is ahead one creep score. Now two, I believe. Now that they're minions of... I, I always feel bad when I'm commentating like individual creeps dying it's like and that creep died a terrible death i mean when you think about creeps there's a video on the front page of uh reddit about uh, there's, a, there's a cute little animation that showed creeps like walking in a lane and then having these like adorable little slap fights with one another the cutest thing i've seen this side of poro brahm but it was just awesome to watch. You gotta feel for the minions. They walk in the lane, they're just like slap fighting each other, and then all of a sudden these like giant monsters come up and just like beat the crap out of them. It's a rough life for minions. So I, I feel very justified commentating, commemorating each one of their individual deaths. Of course, it's actually pretty boring to hear talk about, but look at Trace all over that mid lane. And even if he does have more sustain, it's a rough lane for Pure to be in. And of course, Keep an eye on the summoner spells too. This is also a really big shift as far as their normal playstyles are concerned. Uh, over the course of whoa, going forward. There's the spin, the win, the barrier is coming out. The last turn shot, it's gonna hit on a trace, and it's pure. Survives the 1v1, the all-in underneath that turret. Trace going a little bit too aggressive. And here's actually the one to escape alive. Uses that flash defensively. 
That Golden Aegis saving his life. The Flash getting him out of range. And big of a 2-0 victory over Trace. And there you go. I did not necessarily expect the game to end quite that way. And honestly, even if I had, I would probably have given the win to Trace. But of course, playing very, very opposite styles from what they were used to, I was not sure exactly who to give that, that game to. Trace, overall, a much more passive player. Loves to sort of farm out lanes, uh, you know, get very defensive victories uh, with uh, having won two out of four of his previous wins by taking the enemy turret. Won another one off of Creep score and did pick up first blood off of his Scion game. But almost unanimously, it is a very passive style that he used to play. Going aggressive, well, it didn't pay off. Pure will take a 2-0 victory over him. And even, it was pure, even though it was pure having a little bit more of a passive style, whereas he normally plays aggressively, it paid off under turret and he was able to just barely survive one of the narrowest slivers of health. But I think we're actually going to take a 